Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. Um, and this video is about platelet rich plasma and other biological regenerative agents for the treatment of lower back pain. So what is PRP, platelet-rich plasma? Well, plasma is the liquid component of your blood. So if you take out all the cells and then the cells themselves uh, are red blood cells that deliver oxygen to the tissues. Then you've got white blood cells that help fight infection. And then you've got platelets, which are these really small cells, which we think of as the cells that help form clots uh, when we bleed to stop the bleeding. But actually those platelets have other properties as well. So in tissue, repair they do have properties that help uh, promote cell division and new cell growth and regeneration and therefore platelet rich plasma means you take out you take the platelets and have them in the plasma but remove all the other blood cells so that plasma that liquid component is just rich and dense um, in those platelets and this has been proven to help um, improve tissue repair um, in, in trauma and other injuries. But let's have a look at its treatment in lower back pain where it has been used um, and there's a bit, a bit of a commercial drive behind it. So I'm going to discuss the evidence behind it. So you're using the patient's own blood. You draw the blood, remove all the other cells, and then you've got the platelet-rich plasma, and then you inject it into the area that you want to repair. The use of it started to grow after the publication of this uh, trial. So patients with uh, chronic lower back pain and degenerative disc disease shown on the scan were divided into two groups. One group, uh, platelet-rich plasma, was injected into the presumed pain-generating area. And in the other group, instead of platelet-rich plasma, they had a injection of contrast, which is a placebo. The patients or and the clinicians carrying out the injection did not know uh, which was which, only the trial organizers. And when they looked at the results, they found that the patients with the platelet-rich plasma did better. Let's look at some of the problems with this. Well, disc degeneration is a very common finding on an MRI scan and not necessarily um, an abnormality. Um, in this study, this looked at the prevalence of such findings in people who have never had back pain. And look how common it is. Above the age of 40, 68% uh, of patients on an MRI scan, these are patients without any back pain, will have disc degeneration. So it's massive. So if you have back pain and a scan finds degenerative disc disease, that doesn't mean it's the source of the pain. So in this very trial, to try and prove um, that a specific disc was the generator of the pain, they did a discogram on these patients where you pass a needle into the disc that you assume is causing the pain, inject a little bit of fluid or some contrast to see if that reproduces the pain. The trouble is it's very user dependent and quite often when you inject stuff into someone's disc, it will cause pain. So therefore you have to do a control level, a level below to see if it reproduces the same pain. Um, it's very user dependent and the results of disc grams aren't really that accurate in determining um, whether a disc, whether disc disease is actually the cause of your pain. This review article carried out by colleagues in the United States um, looked at all of the literature around uh, biological agents and platelet-rich plasma for back pain, um, including the trial I just discussed. And they found several problems. So with the trial itself, there was possibly some uh, selection bias in the patients that were selected for the trial. And then looking at all of the other um, studies and papers, um, the evidence to support the use um, of this stuff for chronic lower back pain is quite poor. So now we've got to weigh that up with the risks. Overall, the risks of injecting anything into your spine is relatively low, but one of the risks is infection. Anything that breaches your skin um, can transmit organisms from the skin deep into the spine, into the disc itself. And therefore one of the infections we, we call is discitis. The trouble with that is it's a very low um, occurrence. So a very small, tiny number of people will will get will get a discitis but the trouble with the discitis is disc material doesn't really have a blood supply so your immune system um, uh, its ability to attack infection in the disc um, is quite poor so it can be quite a bad and debilitating infection very difficult to treat and itself has loads of secondary complications 
So in my practice, I'm not ready to start using this yet. I think the evidence that supports um, the use of PRP in chronic lower back pain is quite poor when you weigh that up against the risk. Even though the risk percentages are low, if that risk does occur, it's quite a, it's quite a severe um, risk. And so I think we need to wait for bigger trials to come out. Um, the trial I discussed I had a very small number of patients in it. I think we need large numbers of patients in a much bigger trial um, with better quality evidence and see the results of that before I would be ready to use it in my practice. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And please visit us at spinemdt.com uh, to find out further information. You can look at our three-step process for improving your back pain and your spine. And you can take our free online spine assessment so that we can help you.